A very good evening to all our viewers and listeners. We want to say thank you for making the time to connect with us this evening as we come around God's Word and as we enjoy our midweek encouragement. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you for bringing us together this evening. And we pray that as we gather around your Word, there would be a shifting in our hearts, a renewing in our minds. We would be encouraged and we would be directed how to go forward in our lives. We need direction at a time like this, and we need to hear your voice in our lives. Speak loud and clear this evening, we pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, it's wonderful to have you with us this evening. As you know, we're running a series on a Wednesday evening entitled A Disciplined Life. How to Restore Order Back into Our Lives. And we're specifically speaking about disciplining certain gates in our lives. Last Wednesday, I shared with you the importance of gates. That in the Bible, gates were very important. It allowed people into a city and it protected people within the city. It had a sense of control over the city. And if the gates were weak, it allowed the city to be vulnerable to attack. But if the gates were strong, it protected those that were in the city. And, um, and so last Wednesday, I spoke about five specific gates in our lives, five points of access, five entry points that can influence our lives, specifically the five senses, what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we touch and what we taste influences the way we think and the way we think determines our feelings, determines our attitude and ultimately will determine the action we take in situations. So it all comes down to how we guard our minds and how we protect ourselves from what could come in and influence us incorrectly. Last um, Wednesday, I specifically spoke about the eye gates and how we need to protect what we entertain. For what we entertain can have the potential to enter us and affect us. And this evening, I want to speak about another gate. This evening, I want to speak about the ear gates, the importance of protecting our ear gates. You know, we're living in a time when we are surrounded by so many voices. We are listening to so much all the time. We are hearing all kinds of sounds. The world has become a noise to us. We're not sure what to trust, what to listen to, and what to allow in or what to throw out of our lives. And we constantly have to guard our ear gates. Have you ever sat in the room with family or loved ones and you're watching a movie and suddenly you say, did you hear that? And someone said, hear what? You know, we, we all have different levels of hearing certain things. And undisciplined ears can really start affecting our lives. This evening, I want to speak on how to discipline we sometimes lend our ears to conversations we shouldn't. And we lend our ears to situations and before we know it, we entertain things through our ears that has the potential again to enter us and again to endanger us. So we've really got to protect our ear gates. So if you've got your Bibles this evening, we're going to spend some time in God's Word now. And we're first going to go right back to the book of Genesis. That's where I started last Wednesday when I spoke about the eye gates and how the devil tempted Eve through her eye gates. But I want to show you something this evening that the eyes and the ear gates work so closely together. And it says in Genesis chapter 3, follow with me from verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat? from any tree in the garden. And so the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. So immediately there, right in the beginning of creation, the first temptation that comes to mankind came through the ear gates before the eye gates, because the serpent spoke to Eve and Eve heard what the serpent had to say. And the serpent challenged her 
on what she heard God say. Did God really say? Did you really hear correctly what God said to you, Eve? And Eve went on to say, yes, I did hear God say this. So immediately we see the attention of the serpent tempting Eve through the ear gates. How many of you lost your peace and your joy this week when you heard something that affected your mind? It then affected your feelings. Then it developed an attitude. And before you know it, you started to act in a certain way all because of what you heard. And you did not discipline your ear gates and you allowed information in. And you and I built upon what we heard. And before you know it, it took us off course. And it actually brought disorder into our lives and we lost our peace. We lost a sense of direction and stability all because we did not guard our ear gates. It speaks about an undisciplined ear. Turn with me to the book of Zechariah. It's in the Old Testament, the second to last book of the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 7 and verse 11. Here God is speaking to a nation and to a group of people. And it says in verse 11, But they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly they turned their backs and stopped up their ears. They closed up their ears. They made their hearts as hard as flint and would not listen to the law or to the words that the Lord Almighty had sent by His Spirit through the earlier prophets. So the Lord Almighty was very angry with them. So I want you to see a link here this evening, a very strong link between the condition of your heart that will also then determine how strong are your ear gates. If the condition of your heart is not in a good space or in a good place, your ear gates may not be protecting you and I this evening. For here they made their hearts as hard as flint. They started to become stubborn in their ways and they were no longer teachable in their hearts. And because their hearts were in a bad place, they stopped up their ears and were no longer willing to listen to God. Let's continue. Verse 13. When I called, God said, they would not listen. So when they called, I would not listen. Verse 14. I scattered them with the whirlwind among all the nations where they were strangers. The land was left so desolate behind them that no one could come or go. This is how they made the pleasant land desolate. And I want you to underline that this evening. This group of people, this nation, this community had land that was pleasant at a time. But because they no longer protected or disciplined their ear gates and no longer listened to God because of the condition of of their heart they turned a pleasant land into a desolate land an unproductive land a useless land a barren land how many relationships today were at one stage so pleasant friendships marriages relationships between parents and kids the working environment relationships were so pleasant but people turned the pleasant land into a desolate land because they did not guard their ear gates. They lended their ear gates to conversations about their husbands, conversations about their wives, gossip and slander about the boss at work. They started to lend their ears to the opinions of friends, opinions of neighbors, and all the social media outlets and all that's being said today. And it became such a noise in their minds that they turned the pleasant land into a desolate land. It is so important today for you and I to really guard our ear gates, discipline our ear gates. We are living in an age of such information. 24-7, we are hearing things around us all the time. Like I said to you last Wednesday, you cannot avoid the first look, but you can control the second look. So I want to say to you this evening, you can't avoid all the voices and the noises and the sounds around you, but you can control giving it attention. What are we paying attention to? This evening, I want to speak about three categories of hearing. I want to speak about the deaf ears, the closed up ears, 
and the itchy ears. So if we want to talk about the deaf ear, we go to the Gospel of Mark. Turn with me quickly to Mark chapter 7 and verse 31. And I want to show you here a clear link between your ears and your mouth. Then Jesus left the vicinity in verse 31 and went through, the, through to Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the, the Capitalists. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers, Epha Fata, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. In this scenario, this man was deaf and dumb. And as his ears was opened, so he could speak plainly. I've, heard, I've listened to people today in the way they speak. And I'm, I'm concerned by what's coming out of their mouth. And again, what comes out of our mouth is also a reflection of what's going on in our hearts. For, from over the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. But there's a link here. I've seen when people have lost the ability to really hear what others are trying to say, when they are not disciplining what they're giving their ears to, it can affect their conversations. It can affect the way they speak. But as soon as they start disciplining their ear gates, before you know it, they can start controlling their mouth. Now they can start speaking things correctly, not just based on presumptions, but the reality is they've learned to discipline their ears, accumulate the right information, process the right information, then to speak accurately about the information. So that speaks of deaf ears. How many people today have become deafened to situations around them. They may have gone through a bad experience and no longer want to give their ears to anyone. No one can be trusted. No one can be listened to. And the problem about deaf ears, it will start to affect the way you speak into life. You know, it says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, listen to this in verse 10. To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me, God says? Their ears are closed up so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. Oh, my word. We're not just speaking about deaf ears. Now we're talking about closed up ears. People who, in, who take the effort to close up their ears. Do you remember those early years as children when someone will speak to you? You just close up your ears and you say, I can't hear you. No, 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 you don't, I just can't hear you. No matter what you say, it will not hurt me. And we stuff up our ears. You know, here it says that the people closed up their ears because they found God's word offensive and they no longer found pleasure in it. You know where I find people closed up their ears in relationships? When they become offended towards each other. When wives are offended with their husband, they close up their ears. No matter what their husband says, they no longer find pleasure in what their husband has to say. When you have taken offense with your parents, no matter what your parents say, you close up your ears because you're offended and you no longer take pleasure in what your parents have to say. So an offended heart can close up our ears just as if we are bruised on the inside that we become so stubborn in our hearts then the reality is we end up with deaf ears third category comes out of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3 listen to this 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 for the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine instead to suit their own desires and where are our desires lodged our desires are lodged in our hearts. They will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. They will lend their ears to that which is no longer true, to that which is just literally a myth. It's a hearsay. It's traditionally been shared down from generation to generation. They will no longer discipline their ears to truth. And they will look for someone who will scratch their itching ears. 
So when people present the truth, they will say, that's not what I want to hear. And so they will look for those who will share with them what their itching ears want to say. And that's the problem we have today. We have people walking around with deaf ears that come from stubborn hearts that over a period of time refuse to pay attention to what God has to say in their lives. They've been hurt, they've been bruised, they haven't been healed, and they're still so bitter, so angry, to a point of hatred, their hearts have become so cold. And the reality of a cold, hardened heart is deaf ears. Deaf ears that start to affect the way they speak. Listen to how people speak today. It can be a reflection of deaf ears. Second category is closed up ears. Ears that says, you know what, I'm offended with you. I no longer take pleasure in what you have to tell me. And so I'm closing up my ears. Are you offended this evening? That because of the offense, you can no longer hear the pleasantness of life. You cannot take pleasure in trusting people. You, you, you can take no pleasure in walking with people anymore. No pleasure at work anymore. Because your ears have become so affected by the condition of a heart. Closed up ears. Offended heart. Or is your ears itchy this evening? Every time someone speaks the truth, you say, that's not what I want to hear. I don't like that. I, I, I want someone to tell me what I need to hear. Can someone please scratch my ears? Have you turned away from the truth? Have, are, you, are you offended with the truth? Are you uncomfortable with the truth? It's time this evening to discipline our ears. So I want to say this to you before I close. People with undisciplined ears, this is what they say. They say, I'm wanting to hear something else. In actual fact, they're wanting their own way. In actual fact, they hate to be told what to do. And they walk around with, I know it all. So I don't need you to tell me anything more. I know it all. Or I hate to be told what to do. I can think with my own brain. Or I just want my own way because my way seems to always be the best way. That kind of attitude today has caused hardened hearts, offended hearts, hearts that want their own way. And people end up with deaf ears, closed ears, itchy ears. Next Wednesday, I'm going to continue with how to protect your ear gates. Because there's just so much about this subject. I'm going to share with you the signs of an undisciplined ear. I'm going to share with you how to discipline your ears so that we can hear what we need to hear, so that we can start speaking what we ought to be speaking, so that we can discipline our minds before it leads to undisciplined emotions and undisciplined attitude to undisciplined behavior. So this evening... I hope you've been encouraged and I hope you've been challenged. So this evening as I close, if you feel possibly you have deaf ears tonight, you know deep on the inside of your heart, you've been so badly betrayed, let down, beaten up by life, you're so bruised up, you're hurting this evening, but you've allowed the hurt to lead to bitterness or to stubbornness and no longer opening up. You've closed up your heart. And by closing up your heart, you now have deaf ears. And that's why you can't even speak life into your relationships or situations. Or maybe this evening, you've closed up your ears because you're nurturing an offense. You're waiting for someone to say sorry, but you're walking around with closed ears and you're not hearing what others have to say. And we're losing golden opportunities. Or do you have an itch that's not going away? Because you're no longer opening your heart to truth. But you've closed your heart to truth. And you've opened up instead your heart to the opinions and the myths and the ideas of the world. And by doing so, you've got an itch tonight. And you're looking for someone to scratch that itching ear. 
Well, I hope tonight you will come before God and you will say, Father, I need help. I need to discipline my ear gates. And tonight I'm handing my heart over to you again. Can I pray with you as we close? Father, I pray for everyone out there this evening. All our hearts have been affected by life. What we hear, what we see, what we experience. The five senses of life. The five gates that so often are undisciplined. Tonight, Lord, would you come and heal our hearts from the hurt, the pain, the betrayals, the offenses, the stubbornness, wanting our own way, the pride that's crept up in our lives. Tonight, Lord, we want healthy ears. We want to develop disciplined ears. So would you help us tonight as we just come before you and ask you, heal our hearts so that our ears may become disciplined. We ask for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you've been blessed. Join with us again next Wednesday at 6 as we continue with how to discipline our ear gates. But please, a quick reminder. Easter weekend is on our doorstep. So Friday, Easter Friday, our service will be at 9 a.m. live streamed. As well as on Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday service, live streamed at 9 a.m. Both the Friday and the Sunday services, we are going to be having communion virtually online. So have your communion emblems ready at home so we can break bread with each other this Easter weekend. Otherwise, have a great evening and God bless you all.